Hey, we're back to review another character rigging tool that several of you pointed out in the last video that I did not include in my comparison. And that tool is Bow Bones, which I actually used to rig up this little guy right here and that I recently successfully used in a project. A lot of you were curious about this tool and so was I. So in this video, we're gonna see how Bow Bones stacks up against the other five character rigging tools. Let's get busy. Well, Douglas, I hope you're subscribed because we are devoting this entire video to bow bones. Now, let me give you a little recap. If you haven't already watched the first video, I suggest you go watch it first and then come back to this video. I've left the link to that video in the description for your convenience. Go watch it, come back. That's gonna be the first of probably several plugs throughout this video to go watch that comparison because this video is a continuation of that comparison. And while I'll try to include as much context from the other video as possible, in the spirit of brevity, I won't be able to include everything. So again, if you haven't watched it, go watch it first, come back. So you might be asking, well, why didn't I just include this tool in that first video? At the time of making that video, I had no experience with bow bones. So I didn't really feel like I was in any position to give it a fair shake. However, I've now successfully completed a project using bow bones, and I feel like I'm in a much better position to give you some of my thoughts about bow bones, and boy, do I have some. All right, let's start with that overview. So what is bones? Bones is a plugin that allows you to create IK rigs for animating characters inside of After Effects. If you don't know what IK means, watch my other comparison video for a brief explanation. To get started with Bones, you simply drag the effect onto the layer you want to rig, set three points on your limb that represent where you want the limb to rotate from and bend, then define the mesh, then just hit quick set and the rig is complete. That is the most bare bones, pun intended, way to rig in Bones. Beyond this, you can use bones to rig up the full character that will include controllers for the body, the head, and even the foot and hands. So anyway, that's basically it. Like I said, this isn't a tutorial, so I'm not gonna go into every nitty gritty setting and detail that bone has, but simply put, its major function is to be used to distort and bend layers like a limb. Okay, so let's talk about a few of the things I think bones gets right. First, Bones is incredibly easy to use, and that is a huge plus. Unlike some of these other tools, and I'm looking at you, Buick, you almost don't even need to watch a single tutorial to pick Bones up. And it's so simple that even if you do need to watch some tutorials, they have some and they're pretty short and easy to follow. This means you can spend less time rigging your character and more time animating. And if you watch the first video, like I told you, you know that I value tools that allow me to get straight to animating sooner. Now the distortion you get from Bones is way better than what you can achieve with the puppet pin tool that is built into After Effects. It's so good that in most cases you can slap this bad boy on any layer, no matter if it's already bent or not, and it will look good. It's just, it's, mm. Even when comparing it to using the puppet pin tool with another tool like Puppet Tool or Duik, it's just better. Just look at these side by side. The distortion you get from Bones is just so much better. Also, Bones can be set up so that your entire rig is self-contained on one layer. So this is awesome because you can keep your character rigs lean and you don't have to sift through stacks of controller layers that pile up in your timeline. However, if you want to work with the separate layers in the old fashioned way, Bones can create controllers that can be parented to the other layers and used to drive the animation in a similar fashion to Rubber Hose and Limber. Bones also manages the overlap of a bent limb pretty well. And in case you don't want to mess up the distortion, which sometimes can get a little wonky, you can set a limit on how far the limb can bend in either direction. Also, because of how Bones works, making adjustments to your layer, especially if it's an After Effects shape layer, is easy. Unlike Duik, where adjusting things after you've rigged everything up can get a little finicky. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've just started over with a Duik uh, rig because it was easier to do that than to try to fix the error. With Bones, you can just turn off the effect, make your adjustments, turn it back on, and you keep the rig, you keep all your animation. It's it's really nice. And even after you've rigged it, you can easily adjust the, the joints. So it just makes this experience really easy to modify. All in all, with my experience with Bones has been a positive one, and I was incredibly impressed by the way it bent layers right off the bat. 
Okay, so I've talked about some good things. Now I wanna talk about some of the things I didn't like about Bones. The first thing that disappointed me is that Bones claims to be optimized, but I found that once you built out a rig, it becomes just as sluggish as these other tools. Oddly enough, when I built out my rig like I traditionally would with something like Limber, where I have controllers that drive the animation, it actually performed much better than when I built it out all in one layer. If I compare the RAM preview of the intro rig that I built, which is built the traditional way with the controllers, you can see how even though the full rig has much less animation, it takes almost as long to render. So moving on, Bones comes with another effect called Puppeteer, which creates controllers for all the joints of your rig if you rig it up all in one layer. Um, but what I found odd was you can't keyframe from those controllers. The stopwatch is literally not there. So that means you have to go back and make sure the stopwatch is turned on on the original joints. Then you can use the controllers on Puppeteer to grab and animate with. I understand why they made it this way because those controllers on all the other effects are only visible if that specific effect is selected in the effects panel. So without Puppeteer, you'd have to be constantly clicking back and forth to the different effects to animate those controllers. But I'm just not sure why they didn't just make it so that you could keyframe from Puppeteer itself. I don't know if that's an After Effects limitation or what. Honestly, the rig I built with the controllers, you know, the more traditional way was easier for me to work with than the Puppeteer one. It's convenient to be able to just click on a controller right in the comp composition panel without first having to select the effect over in the panel over here and then have to select the controller. And then you sometimes don't click right on the controller and it deselects the effect and the controller disappears and it, it just gets a little annoying. And as you could probably tell, I didn't really enjoy animating with Puppeteer. When you are animating with these little position controllers that are often used in these effects, you can't adjust the spatial interpolation. I mean, you can set them to Bezier, but the path remains linear, meaning that it moves in a straight line from one point to another. You can't grab the path and manipulate it or even see it like you can with the position of a layer. And you might be asking, why does that matter? Well, in animation, things move in arcs most of the time, not in straight lines. And so when you can't bend a path like you normally can, it takes extra work to achieve that arc. You might say then, well, Build it out with the controller layers then. Well, then you lose the one of the main benefits of bones and your layers start to pile up just like those other tools. So I personally scrapped using Puppeteer because it was sort of buggy and I didn't really like the workflow. But I will say that maybe I am just biased towards my own previously established method of character rigging. Puppeteer forces me to depart from that and I just think that my way is more efficient. You can't separate the dimensions of the X and Y position of your controllers when using Puppeteer. You can't adjust the Bezier pass of your controllers. You can't select the controllers without first selecting the layer, then selecting the effect in the effects control panel, and then you can finally select the controllers. I just found that working the old fashioned way with the controllers in the layer stack was easier for me. So how does Bones stack up against those five other tools. Well, in terms of flexibility, or maybe a better word is versatility, I think Bones is right in the middle in terms of versatility. And here's why. Bones is really good for a few specific needs or use cases, but outside of those, I'm probably gonna opt for one of these other tools. While Bones can leave your timeline looking clean, minimal layers doesn't necessarily mean simple rigs. Bones just stuffs all that complexity of the rig into the effects panel instead of the layer panel. Is it as complex and does it require as much troubleshooting as Duic? No, of course not, but it's not far behind and it's definitely not as simple as using rubber hose or limber. Where Bones really stands out is in the distortion of the, its engine. And I don't know if that's what you call it, but the code that, that runs the distortion is fantastic. The fact that I don't have to recreate or modify my limbs to be able to rig something is awesome and it really is astonishing how well it can work on a bent limb so i think the big question is is bow bones worth 99 dollars with do it being free and these other tools all around the 40 dollar price point what does bow bones offer you that justifies that extra 60 dollars of your hard-earned cash 
Well, being a plugin which requires a bit more intense coding than scripts, naturally, Bowbone's gonna be a little bit pricier. But for that price tag, I'm a bit disappointed about some of the things that Bowbones doesn't have, like FK and auto stretching, which both seem to be rather minor functions that should have been included. When a tool costs $99, you kind of hope that it's going to be the be all end all of character rigging tools. You expect it to do what all these other tools can do and more. But Bow Bones is not that tool. It's just like the rest of these tools. Good for some situations, not ideal for others. But yet, having said all that, Bow Bones for me paid for itself in the amount of time it saved me on this particular project. Instead of having to redesign the limbs to work with Duik, settle for some weird distortions of the puppet pin tool, or recreating the limbs using Limber, I was able to just throw the bones right onto the layers as they were given to me and start animating with minimal setup. So here's my recommendation. If you're working on a project where you need to distort the layers and you can afford to have all the tools at your disposal, then yes, I'd recommend you grab Bow Bones to have as an option. But for those of you on a budget, you might consider checking out Duik or Rubber Hose first, as both of those tools can be used to create IK rigs with the Puppet Pin tool. While also those tools come with some functionality for other methods of character rigging. So there you have it. Those are some of my thoughts on Bow Bones. I hope this video was helpful. I wanna ask, what do you guys think of Bow Bones? Do you guys use it? And if not, which one of these character rigging tools do you prefer to use? Let me know in the comments below. If you have any additional questions about Bow Bones or if you have any suggestions on other tools for me to compare, leave your comments in the comment section below. If you found this video was helpful, make sure you hit that like button. It really helps me in the algorithm. And if you want more content like this in the future, make sure you're subscribed with the bell notification turned on. Yada, yada, yada. You know how to use YouTube. We'll see you guys in the next video.